Well, good morning. Uh, I'm J.R. England, a real estate partner at Hunt and Andrews Kurth, and I'm here with my colleague Ryan Bates uh, to talk about the new New York City anti-harassment law that goes into effect on April 1st. Ryan, why don't you give us a little insight to what the law is about? So this is a, a new requirement in both New York City and New York State. And the bottom line is this, if you operate a business, run a business in New York City or New York State, you have to give mandatory annual sexual harassment training to all of your employees. And so a lot of companies previously provided some form of sexual harassment training, perhaps at the start of an employee's um, tenure. Um, the new law requires this to be annual every year for essentially the rest of their career. So this is, uh, this is definitely a, is gonna be um, something that employers need to be aware of. Well, typically a lot of these laws tend to have exceptions for the size of the business or how often you operate in, in New York. Um, how do people know whether it's going to apply to their business? So this is very simple. It's going to apply to every business within the state of New York, even if you only have two employees. So um, that's correct that there typically are size limitations on these type of laws, but the legislator was pretty clear with this law, everybody's got to do this training every year. Ryan, this is obviously a New York City law, um, and there's also New York State law involved in this. Um, how do those laws interact, and you know, when are employers required to complete these new training requirements? So the two laws are very similar, um, and you can knock out both of the requirements in the same training. Um, the requirements under the state law must be done by October 2019. Under the city law, you have until April 2020. Um, however, it's our recommendation that all employers get this training done to meet both requirements by uh, October. As a real estate practitioner, I'm trying to figure out how this law applies to my clients. And so if I have a client that, for example, is a large landlord and may have other tenants in their spaces, um, are they responsible for training the tenants' employees? Or, or how does that work with, with real estate companies in terms of who's responsible for, for training whom? So if you're a real estate company, sort of just like any other corporation or regular company, you have to make sure all of your own employees are trained. Um, if you have landlords in your buildings that operate separate businesses, uh, the onus is on them to train their own employees. Um, but you, as a real estate company, must train your own employees. And if you have independent contractors, temporary employees that do work for you, you'll have to get them trained as well. Well, let me ask another question. How about employers that have employers, employees, both in New York State and, and elsewhere? What about visiting employees to New York? Are they required to be trained as well? So if you have employees that travel into New York City or state limits and work and provide services on behalf of your company, those employees need to be trained as well, even if they're only visiting the state as little as a few days a year. And in terms of the, the type of training that's done, you mentioned that you could do online or, or in person. Does the law say anything about how someone is supposed to be trained in these new requirements? Absolutely. And this is, um, this is probably the most important aspect of, of, of the law is that the requirement is that it must be interactive. So if, if you historically have put in a sexual harassment video for employees and hit the play button and walked out of the room for um, for the next half an hour, 45 minutes, that's not going to work anymore. Um, to be interactive, um, if there's a live trainer, the trainer must engage the audience, um, the workers, in, in sort of questions and case studies. Um, because what the state and city did not want is um, some type of passive training where employees are going to be falling asleep or not paying attention. So that is very important. Um, and, and as I mentioned, you can do it two different ways. You can do it live um, with, with a, a trainer there present, or you can do it sort of an online interactive version of that. Um, if, if you do the interactive online version of that, I would recommend um, that you have counsel make sure that the vendor is fulfilling all the state requirements.